in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, O God, Amen. The Sinful Woman. What a beautiful Bible uh, chapter. It was one of the favorite chapters to Abuna Abshul Kamil, the departed, and also one of the favorite chapters, stories for Abuna Lu Asida Rose. And I will confess it is also one of my favorite uh, stories in the scripture. You are speaking about, you need to understand the setup because the setup is a key. When a Pharisee is asking Christ to come to his house, is uh, think of this, think of uh, a gathering of the most extreme, the gathering of the most uh, tough, the most uh, people living by the letter, Nasal Aishin Bal Harf, the gathering of uh, the, the people who are. Uh, very, very strict and very harsh. And he is inviting Christ to come in his house. And you think, okay, that God is not rejecting anyone and that's why God is accepting the message of, or the invitation from this very strict, very harsh, very uh, man that he, is, he thinks that he is very religious. And the Lord said, I will, uh, I will enter his house and I will uh, have a meal with him as he is not rejecting anyone. And a woman who is sinful, with a bad reputation, a very bad reputation, everybody knows about her that she is living a sinful life, everybody knows about her history, uh, everybody knows about her, uh, her, uh, her bad reputation. And when people are having a bad reputation, they smell bad. It is not that you, you they stink. No, but they smell bad because all the you interact with them and everybody knows, you know what, ah, this is the one who, who is stealing, this is the one who is doing this, this is the girl that uh, uh, has done this and that. And a very, very bad smell that comes out of their life. And this is also the smell of, of sin. In the story of St. Mora and St. Um, Timothy, if you return back to the story, St. Mora was, they were married, newly wed, and St. Timothy was the deacon who was in charge of, I think I should come a little bit further from that. And St. Timothy was the deacon of the church, and uh, they went and they, they sent a message to the emperor telling him, by the way, this deacon is keeping the, 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 the books of the church. So the emperor asked him to worship idols. The emperor, he refused. So he, the, the same story of the, of the saints, then he put him in prison. And someone told him uh, that he is a newlywed. So they went, they reached out to St. Mora so as to convince St. Timothy in the prison, so as he can change his mind and deny Christ, with a very simple idea, Mora entered to the cell and told him, uh, uh, Timothy, Habibi, it's no big deal. You just say that, just worship God in your heart. We say, you know what, I, and if you want me to give a little bit of incense to the to the idols, it's no big deal, just shred incense. I just bring a couple of them. Short incense, incense to the idol, it's no big deal, but your heart is, is going all the way with God. This is the approach that she, Mora, came and told Timothy about it. And I'm telling you all of this story because Timothy told the soldier who is in charge of, of his cell, told him, uh, I'm feeling a very bad smell. I'm feeling a very bad smell, take her away. It is the smell of sin. I'm feeling a very bad smell because when you are telling me to deny Christ, this is, doesn't feel good, doesn't smell good. When you are pushing me to do something sinful, this is, doesn't smell good, smell good. When you are inviting me for a party where inappropriate things is happening, this is, doesn't smell good. It is the sin, the sinful bad smell. And this lady had that same smell in her life. 
She is breathing it, she is thinking it, she is living it, she is talking it, she is posting it on Instagram, she is uh, posting it on Twitter, she is lighting it on social media. This is all her life, sin, sin, sin. And she smelled very bad. But though all of this is going, is happening in her life, and she knows that Christ is being, is invited in a place where the, the owner of the home is very, very strict, very aggressive man. But she said, if Christ, who accepted the Samaritan woman who was sinful, who accepted the other people who has been sinful, who said, I came, and the ati ata likayu khalis maqad halak, or the Son of Man came to save what has been lost already. He started, she started saying, maybe he will accept me with this bad smell, with this bad history, with this bad attitude, with this bad mind, with this bad feelings. Maybe he will, he will accept me. So she, she knew that Jesus was at, sitting at the table in the Pharisee's house and think of a sinful woman, how a sinful woman is going to bypass or enter the house of, of that strict Pharisee. It's not easy. Everybody is telling her to get Amelia. What are you coming for? You should not be here. And she is she's in a public situation which is extremely embarrassed. But she didn't pay attention to all of this. She went and she's focusing on Christ. She brought an alabaster flask of fragrant oil and stood at his feet behind him weeping. So she stood, she couldn't even dare to look to Christ in the eye, but she if, if you go in the, uh, how they were eating in the time, uh, th think of, of a very uh, round table, but it is, it is very, very short. So in order to eat on this table, what you are going to do? Whether you, you sit across your, your feet, your, your, uh, across your leg, or you will sit like this. You will, you will sit like this and your feet is in the back and you are eating from his, this area. So she came from the back of Christ and she started from his behind. And, and she was weeping because of the bad smell of her life is taking over. She's feeling very guilty, very ashamed, not worthy. And, and she's coming to Christ and, and the, the, the tough situation is the first thing that she or the first, the toughest part is once she started touching the, the feet of the Lord. Think of this, Marish, take, take this, yani, try to think with me. If someone you don't like is touching you, just back off, why are you touching me? You will, you, this is the first thing you will think. Why are you touching me? Don't touch me. So the first approach of this sinful woman coming that close to Christ, who is the holiness, is the, the, the holy of the holies. He is the source of all holiness. He is the, 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 the Lord himself. And the first, first thing that she is touching him, did he reject her? He didn't reject her. Did he kick her? And he told her, oh, what? away from me, you are a sinful woman? He didn't. As he didn't reject the Pharisee, he didn't reject the sinful woman, and he will never reject you if you are returning back to him again. As he didn't reject the Pharisee, he didn't reject the sinful woman, and he will never reject you and reject me if we are returning back to him. And when she felt a little bit, she's not rejected, and she started weeping because of the history and the bad memory and the impure thoughts and the things, She's overwhelmed that she began to wash. So she cries because she is feeling unworthy. So the tears is falling on the, the feet of Christ. So what she did, so what she did. Now I'm ruining his feet. And I, and I, and I get a great benefit. So she started wiping. And you don't have wipes in this time on her clinic. So what is the, the thing that she will wipe her, 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 the feet of the Lord with? She wiped his feet with her hair. For, for the ladies, ask yourself when you are going for a party, going for uh, something that is yani, fancy, or gathering, or everybody is, 
what is the first thing everyone is thinking, all the ladies are thinking of in my hair, Hamali Shari. Right? This is, this is how it works, Hamali Shari. This is the glory of the woman. And you, you, you call Mishharif, who, and you take appointments, so do what? And, and that your hair would look great and nice. Because this is the glory or a source of the glory of the woman. But when she is on the feet of the Lord, she didn't say that my, my hair is the source of the glory and I am I'm very beautiful. And most probably if, if a woman is living a life of sin like this, she would have been very good looking because this is one of the talents that she has. And her hair would have been the source of her glory, but she didn't say, no what? Uh, my hair is very precious and I'm going to utilize it to seduce other men. No, 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 no. Her hair is all the way down and she told him, my tears are not worthy that to be falling on your foot. And so I will wipe it with the most precious thing that I have and is close to me, which is my hair. So she started wiping the hair, the, the feet of the Lord with, so, and she stood behind him and she began to wash his feet with her tears and wipe them with her hair of her head. And after this, this, think of this. So because she is very, very emotional, very upset, very heart crushed. So she started crying. The tears went on the feet of the Lord. So she started wiping it. And after she started wiping it, when you are in a situation like this, so you want to apologize for ruining the feet of Christ and making it uh, full of, uh, of tears. So she started kissing the feet of the Lord, telling him, I'm so sorry of what I have done. I'm so sorry of what I have done. And all this process, the Lord didn't say anything. And what did this lady say? I want you to return. What did she say to the Lord? No, I'm serious. What did she say to the Lord? Maybe forgive me? All her actions said this, but she never said the word. She didn't say anything. But as you said, all her actions were saying, please forgive me. Please, I have messed up. Please, this is very embarrassing. Please, I cannot even love myself. Please, this is so bad. Please, forgive me. But she didn't say anything. But she is this is a true repentance or not this is definitely a true repentance and you will see what the lord is going to say sometimes you say in front of your father of confession a lot of stuff but the heart is not repentant what is making more difference in front of god the heart not what you say i'm not saying not to say anything and, and hide your sins because we know the rule of hiding the sins the one who covers his sin will not prosper it is very clear. But man yatrukha, man yuqir biha wa yatrukha yurham, and the one who confesses it and forsake it will have mercy. So we are not about, she didn't confess it because it was very well known, very obvious, everybody knows it. A woman living all her life in sin, and she is called a sinful woman. The, the scripture is saying the, the, the sinful woman. So, the Lord did, as the Lord did not reject the Pharisee, he did not reject the sinful woman, and he will never reject any one of us. If you are returning back with, with the heart is repenting, not, ah, I will tell Abuna, what it, ah, Abuna, sometimes I get distracted in, in, uh, in, in prayer. You know the story of the lady, there was a lady confessing her sins. The story Abu Antonius Yunan mentioned. So there, there were two deacons praying Tazbeha. Abu is at the end of the church, and this lady is confessing, and the two deacons saw this vision. Separately, without no, they didn't they didn't know that each other is seeing the same thing. They saw the lady in the end opening her mouth and a fly, the banner, comes out of the mouth. So, and then she closes her mouth, then she opens her mouth and a fly comes out of the mouth. Then she opens her mouth and a snake is going to come out of the mouth but goes in. 
snake is going to come out and it goes in. So they couldn't believe what they are saying, seeing. They, they waited till they finished his beha. They returned back to Abuna and they told him, Abuna, we are so sorry to interrupt the confession. She left. We are so sorry to interrupt the confession, but this is what we saw. We saw a, a woman opening her mouth and the flies coming outside. And there was when sometimes she opens her mouth, the snake wants to go out, but it goes in. So Abuna uh, left the church and he ran all the way to the place of, of the, the home of this lady and unfortunately he found her dead, she died. This flies are little sins. Uh, I got distracted in uh, uh, sometimes Abuna I... Uh, uh, and the big snakes were hiding, the big sins the big things we are doing, well, ah, because I want to be appearing righteous around Abuna, as Abuna knows my family, and Abuna knows my uh, my mom and my dad, maybe they will, they will not be friends with us anymore, maybe this is going to happen, maybe this is going to happen, and the big sin, we are not confessing, because we are self-righteous, or we are afraid or worried about our image. I don't know how she died, but the story, it says this. So I'm just saying that someone is in the, in the sacrament of confession and they are having the opportunity of getting everything out, the, the flies and the, 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 the snakes and everything and get really cleansed inside out and they are covering their sins. And a woman that she knows, everybody knows everything bad she, is, she has done because she was doing it publicly. But her heart was returning repentance. The amazing thing is, I, I will just end here. This is this is a fully fully loaded uh, scripture. You can sit on uh, Luke chapter seven from thirty six to fifty, and we can have a re full retreat about it. But I will just. Uh, what was the smell of this lady before? Before. We're smelling very bad. <laughs> smelling the scent, the, the, the smell of the sin. Very, very bad, sinful smell. The aroma was sinful. Now she brought this alabaster flask that is full of fragrant oil, which is a very expensive one, and she broke it in order to open it like a very expensive perfume. In order to open it, you need to break the, 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 the whole flask. And she poured, she took from this fragrant oil and she put on the, the feet of the Lord. So now the feet of Christ is smelling what? It's smelling what? It's very beautiful. And her hands is smelling what? Very beautiful. If someone is has has been in the situation and he, and he was a little bit far and he came closer to Christ, he would smell the, the fragrant oil on Christ. And if he, they saw her afterwards, they would like, Wow, you have the same smell of, of Christ. From that evil, bad, nasty, stingy, very bad sin or, or smell or aroma of sin, now coming closer to God, never reject, will never reject you, coming wholeheartedly without a word, pouring her heart in front of God, praying and telling God about all the things that she has in her, in her uh, heart, without saying a word, without saying a single word, all of this is happening. And look what happened in the end. Therefore, I say to you, her sins, which are many, the Lord is saying, her sins, which are many, are forgiven. It's gone. For she loved much, but he to whom little is forgiven, the same loves little. And he said to her, your sins are forgiven. Those who sat at the table with him began to say to themselves, who is this who even forgives sins? And he said to, to the woman, your faith has saved you. Go in peace. Imanik khalasik is heavy bisalam. Go in peace. She was restless. She met Christ. She went in peace. She was smelling bad. She met Christ. She went smelling good. She was heartbroken. She met Christ. She went healed. She, uh, she had a huge amount of bad history and bad reputation. She met Christ, she went 
free from all of this, go in peace. And that's why the, the more we look, the more we tell God, I owe you much from the sins, and you know that he's going to forgive, so you are feeling, so if I'm if I, if I telling my father of confession about the flies, the very little sins, ah, oh, Abuna, I did this and I did that. So Abuna will be telling me, uh, may God forgive you and absolve, uh, absolve you and forgive you and pray for me the absolution. How would I feel after this? Okay. I'm good anyway. It's no big deal. But when I, I pour all the sins out, all the things that I owe out, and he is telling me, God is forgiving you, I will feel what? I feel great. I feel relieved, like, like never before, yes. Usually, like, when people confess, they, like, feel good because they got it all out, and then they just start doing the same again. Okay, this is a good point. When people are confessing, they feel good because they got it all out. This is a sign that they, this is a true confession. Because they got everything out. Even if we fall again, what we do? We rise. Fall again, we rise. We fall again, we rise. Do you know? Do you know what is the main reason the monks are staying in the monastery? If you ask why the monks are staying in the monastery, when you see Ambassarabian, you know Ambassarabian, the metaphor. Ask him. Ask him. Why did you go to the monastery? You know what is his answer? To live a life of repentance. <laughs> to live a life of repentance. Because they esteemed repentance as the most important thing. You know what? I will not get distracted. With. They are not going there to be saints. They are going there to live a life of repentance. So what is the, my role as a priest? To live a life of repentance. What is the role of the congregation? To live a life of repentance. Regardless of our works of life. This is simply it. Be, but you mentioned a very good point. When you put it all out, you feel relieved. If you go and you went outside of your confession and you don't feel relieved, most probably you didn't put it all out. It has been like this flies that is going. May God give me and give each one of us that we will learn from this beautiful story. Luke chapter 7. Please return back to it and think of the details of this beautiful story of the sinful woman. How God did not reject the Pharisee, and he never rejected her. How God did not tell her, stay away from me, you are a sinful woman. Without a word, she got peace, and she proved her faith, and her sins are forgiven. And sometimes we are just talking, talking, talking in to our Father of Confession, or to God, but we never get this peace that is within us. That's why the church in the liturgy is saying, keep us in your faith, in your peace unto the end. Ahfazna. Uh, keep us in your faith and give us your peace unto the end the peace unto the end is the key because how come I'm going to get this peace because I put it all out as we just learned to whom is the glory forever and ever Amen